Greetings, everybody. It's me, your friendly neighborhood Uncle Pete, and this is the third episode in my horror debate series that I'm collaborating with my good friend Carlin. We're debating a wide array of topics in the horror genre, and today we're going to actually debate what is the most influential horror film. So after you watch my video, please watch Carlin's video. I'll have a link down in the description. And then if you can please go to the community tab on his page and vote for who you thought had the better argument. Also, please let us know in the comments down below what your stance on this topic is. We love hearing from the viewers and we'd love to know what you think the most influential horror film is because nobody's opinion is wrong. It's just different. And I think that's awesome. We can all share our love for the horror genre. Well, my pick for the most influential horror film of all time is 1974's The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Now, most of us know why this movie is great, but the question is, is this the most influential horror movie? And I'm going to say yes, and I'm going to start with the way the movie opens. The opening text crawl with narration by John Larroquette is just excellent. So, this movie came out in 1974, and it wasn't the first horror movie to do this with the opening text crawl. But, if you ask fans to name a movie with an impactful opening text crawl with narration, I think most people are going to say The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Why? Because it's awesome, and the way John Larroquette narrates it, it kind of sets the tone for the rest of the movie. It prepares you and kind of warns you for what you're about to witness. Now, there are people who think this movie that is actually filled with gore and scenes of graphic violence, while it may have some scenes that are pretty violent and gory, it is relatively mild when you compare it to today's standards. Toby Hooper did something special with this movie. He scared us without showing a lot of blood and gore. He let us imagine what was actually happening. This is a low-budget film as well. It has a do-it-yourself uh, aspect to it. And even Sam Raimi said that this movie, the low-budget do-it-yourself aspect, inspired him to make The Evil Dead, another fantastic horror film. Now, Toby Hooper said that, that he was inspired to make this film when he was Christmas shopping in a hardware department store in like a Sears-like store during the Christmas season. And he did not like crowds, and he actually said, I was kind of freaking out, and I just wanted to get out of there, get out of the crowd. And so I found myself in front of a chainsaw display in the hardware department. And that's where the idea came from. Well, if I pick up this damn thing and start it, they'll part like the Red Sea and I can get out of here. And I feel like that's why this movie is so influential to the horror genre. Since it was influenced by real life actions of people, you know, during mundane things like shopping. And it's also, you know, takes some inspiration from serial killer Ed Gein. Um, I think this movie that scares us the most are the ones that tap into fear that we already have ingrained in us. The ones that actually can make us think, this can happen to me. And, you know, there is a lot of social commentary in this film, and I think it's one of the first films to really do so. And I think it paved the way for horror fans, excuse me, for horror films to be used as a social commentary. Now, there's nothing supernatural about this film, I mean, it's about a group of kids on a road trip through Texas to investigate the grave desecration of one of the character's relatives. They pretty much just wind up in the wrong place at the wrong time, which really can happen to anybody. And for a film to have such an in impact on the horror genre, where it was banned for its graphic violence, but like I said, there is a lack of screen violence in this movie. It's a horrifying movie, really, without being a gore-soaked bloodbath, and that is intensely influential to horror, um, horror fans and horror film directors. Another quote from a famed horror director that, that I think can enhance my point was Wes Craven. When he was reminiscing about his first viewing of the film, he was actually uh, wondering what kind of Mansonite crazoid could have created such a thing. Now, Wes Craven created, you know, inc incredible movies. Last House on the Left, Nightmare on Elm Street, The Scream franchise, which in these films are still popular today. It was just a brand new Scream movie. And even Wes Craven was kind of influenced by the insanity of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I also have to mention how the way this movie was filmed. The dinner scene with Sally tied to the chair. The way quick cuts were used with close-ups on Sally and the Sawyer family. You have shots right in her eyeball with it darting back and forth. This puts you in the room, which is why I think this movie is so effective 
with its scares. It really does scare the viewer, putting you in the room. And before 1974, I don't think a lot of horror movies really did that as well as the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. You know, there are some great Giallo films that did that as well. Um, and also, guess what? I haven't even mentioned Leatherface yet. Um, if you pick the Mount, Mush- uh, Mount Rushmore of iconic horror villains, I'd argue that four names close to the top of the list would be Freddy Krueger, Jason Voorhees, Michael Mars, and Leatherface. And Leatherface came years before all those other guys. He is a pillar in the horror community. This film is also in New York City's Museum of Modern Art's permanent film collection for the influence it had, not just on the horror genre, but on films as a whole. Nearly 50 years later, Leatherface is still known as one of the most terrifying horror villains. If that's not influential, I don't know what is. This film set the new standard for slashers. You know, something that really hadn't been seen before in the early 70s. Leatherface is a silent killer without any really set personality. He's just pretty much unhinged. And this is, again, was years before Michael, Jason, or Freddy. Wes Craven also said that his 1977 film, The Hills Have Eyes, was an homage to Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Ridley Scott also credits Texas Chainsaw Massacre as an influence for his 1979 film, Alien. Alexandra Aja is another director who's made some horrifying films. He credits Texas Chainsaw Massacre as an influence. Rob Zombie, love him or hate him, I love a lot of his films. He sees Toby Hooper's movie as a major influence on his work, and you can see that a lot in House of a Thousand Corpses. Recently, we have Ty West's X and Pearl, and it's really clear to see the influence Texas Chainsaw Massacre had on those films. I wish I could go back to 1974 and able to watch this movie in a theater for the first time. You know, because there really weren't any movies like that way back then. So the impact would have been incredible and definitely had a lasting impression. I do love Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's a great movie, and I feel that it is the most influential horror movie. Well, that wraps it up for me. I really appreciate you watching this video. Now, please go to Carl's channel. I have a link down in the description below and watch his side of the argument. Then he'll have a, a poll up on the community tab on his page. And we would love if you would vote for who you thought had the better argument. It's a ton of fun. And we both would really enjoy if you put in the comments down below what you think the most influential horror movie of all time is. There are no wrong answers. We just love talking nerdy about horror. Should be a lot of fun. And we really do appreciate it. Thanks again. I will see you here on Friday for my next episode of Nails in a Coffin. And next Wednesday, I'll have my next episode of Let's Nail This. And that's a lot of fun. Check out those series. I'll have a card up here so you can check out my last episode of Let's Nail This. And that is actually something you as the viewer can participate in as well. And I'll see you here on Wednesday in two weeks for the next episode of this hard debate series with my good buddy, Chrome. Please forget, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe on both of our channels. We both put a lot of hard work in. And we'd love if you can just do us that favor by hitting that subscribe button. It keeps us motivated to keep making these videos. Take care, everybody. Take care of yourselves, each other. Be good to each other. I am your friendly neighborhood Uncle Pete. And remember, with great kills, they must also come great nails.